Eric Hutchison is venturing where no diver has gone before. He's 170 feet beneath the ground in Florida, worming his way through a labyrinth of freshwater limestone caves. His mission, to map these caves and collect scientific data. Danger hides within every passage. Equipment could fail or walls could collapse. He swims in constant danger. They're very, very hazardous. There's piles of collapse that have to be manipulated. So I'm the guy who goes crunching through this really little area and a rock slides, boom, and pins a leg or breaks your guideline. And uh, it, it can get really, really tough. Eric is a cave diver survivor. He's cheated death over and over to explore what he considers the most fascinating place on Earth. Using high-powered lights and special breathing gases, he will spend up to eight hours worming through incredibly narrow tunnels. At five foot five, he's well-suited for this tight-fitting work. But often, he says, the danger comes from within. If you don't control fear, if the fear escalates into panic, you're dead. It's all over. To explore beyond the end of the line, to, to push the edge of the envelope, you have to really enjoy and understand fear. This is the Florida Panhandle. Geologists the world over marvel at Florida's vast limestone strata called karst. Researchers believe water flowing underground from the Appalachian Mountains has carved the karst into a Swiss cheese-like network of tunnels. These caves are living, breathing animals. They're still growing, they're still changing, they're still moving. Since 1990, Eric has published over 60 underwater cave maps. He is perhaps the world's only full-time cave cartographer. I love science, I love exploration, but uh, to make a living at this, you have to produce something, and, and I produce art. Today, Eric will lead a research expedition into the Silver Glen Springs in north-central Florida, a honeycomb of fragile rock and hazardous tunnels. Each diver will carry waterproof pens and slates, measuring equipment, over 200 pounds of dive gear, and padding to protect against the sharp cave rocks. That's a skid lid. That pretty much keeps you from uh, going completely bald. Otherwise, uh, the top of my scalp might look like that. <laughs> when you go through these real low areas, you're constantly just scraping right along the ceiling. We destroy a lot of dive gear. All right. Adios. At shallower depths, divers are fresh prey for alligators and poisonous snakes. With an eye out for predators, the descent begins. Approaching certain vents, Eric and the team will be ripped by intense currents. I mean, you're literally just holding on. Your mask is wanting to blow off your face. I could uh, probably um, relate it to holding on to the wing of an airplane as it's flying. The team hopes to reach a depth of 170 feet, 50 feet further than recommended recreational dives. Cave divers sometimes descend to 300 feet, requiring electric scooters to save their breath. Eric begins his mission to survey every tube and vein of this craggy network. As all cave divers must, they will lay a guideline to help them find their way back out of this twisting maze. As the guideline is going through the cave, like this, we'll lay the survey slate right on the line and collect all the, the azimuth and angle information. And then with our digital computer depth gauges and, and decompression monitors, we record the azimuth, the depth, and the distance of the line, all the detail of the passages and the water flow, which way the water's going, uh, where, where the rocks are falling, or where specific bacteria are along in the cave. Besides mapping this system, these cave divers are also on a mission to seek out undiscovered life forms. Caves offer a rare glimpse into a highly specialized habitat, one with little food and no light. Dive team biologist Tom Morris has captured these blind white crawfish that inhabit the dark caves. He will also search for undiscovered microorganisms that pharmaceutical companies might develop into new drugs.
squirming through tiny holes, carrying his tanks in front or alongside, Eric conquered his claustrophobia long ago. Everybody has had a claustrophobic moment, no matter how great or small. Uh, sure, I went beyond my limitations, and I got scared to death on a few occasions. You have to respect fear. And if any caver tells you he has not been scared, he's lying and his ego is going to kill him. A few years ago, Eric had a close call. Cave divers from around the globe embarked on a major expedition to Mexico. The Nohoch Nanchi underground cave system is the largest in the world, a magnificent realm of exquisite danger. I felt completely safe, just like it being in the mother's womb. And one of the tanks that I was using bumped an outcropping. And when I bumped that outcropping, it came down and landed right on top of both of my legs, pinning me into the silt. Eric thrashed about until he could swim to safety, escaping Nohoch without injury. He is thankful at least six cave divers have drowned in recent years. After diving the caves, he uses chalk and pencil to add form and color to black and white data. Later, Eric takes his drawings to be scanned and enhanced by a computer artist. The finished originals sell for up to $5,000. Reprint maps are sold to other explorers, geologists, and government agencies charged with protecting our natural resources. It supplies uh, environmental agencies with water quality management issues. It tells them which way the water is flowing, where these large voids are underground so they don't put a waste treatment plant right on top of it. So as we're surveying and exploring, we're actually trying to search for knowledge to protect the resources of our planet. There are thousands of uncharted underground waterways to be explored all over the world. Eric regards his maps as historic documents, precise pictures of virgin territory that will constantly change, offering new images and scientific insight that will protect this still mysterious water resource. Coming up on SeaTech, enter an other world